Once you start realizing that people do things in your life and they have no remorse and you start recognizing the difference, you're going to start thinking twice about letting people back in your life after they do you wrong the first time. As you start realizing that they come back only for themselves, it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with how you feel. It has nothing to do with correcting their behavior. It has everything to do with how they feel. So let's talk about it. So first thing. Hey, my beautiful souls. Welcome back to Fanny with Jesse, the life coach. A big welcome to all of you if it's your first time seeing me. My name is Jessie. I am a life coach and I do a little bit of everything on this channel from organizing our spaces to organizing our home to organizing our mind to making sure we are staying in alignment. And so um, I know it's been a little bit of some time that I have not uploaded and that's just because I had so much going on in my own life and I had to go give some attention, love and care to some certain you know elements of my life and so I've been doing that but I am back <laughs> I am back and while I was away I was actually you know looking coming on and and seeing all your beautiful posts and seeing some of your questions and concerns and I noticed that a lot of people were resonating with two specific videos that I uploaded you know pretty recently and one of them was about karma when you become someone else's karma when someone else does you wrong and the other has been all surrounded about jealousy and envy and so one of the reasons that i think that those two videos hit so hard and it has gained a lot of attention from a lot of people is because all of us can relate to those type of emotions and those type of scenarios right uh people who come in and disturb our peace in some shape form one way or another right and today i want to talk a little bit more about that i want to talk about how to avoid that right. and one of the things i've noticed especially when i coach women in particular is they give people chance after chance after chance after chance and one of the reasons they do that and they allow people in their life and it doesn't have to be on a romantic sense it could be with family members it could be with friends it could be in, in any element of their life right any um type of dynamic you know a different every relationship is different but one of the things that they go in cycles with people over is their regret and they usually confuse other people's regret for remorse and today I'm going to speak and dive in a little bit more about that because I think it's so important for so many people to realize and understand the difference and think of this in a critical way. The issue is that we don't stop and think of these things in a critical way. Majority of the time, especially if you're a good person, you think that everybody is going to do you the way you would do them, right? So if you're a good person, you won't, majority of the time you won't even contemplate about doing people a certain way and when i say doing people meaning treating people a certain way you wouldn't even dream of treating people a certain way and so it's a hard hard concept to get around when you realize that people will do you wrong over and over and over and over and they will feel literally no remorse for their actions and majority of the time we project our own feelings our own emotions of how we think another person feels about the situation or how we hopefully and wishfully think that someone will feel about the situation right and we think that people are remorseful and what they are is regretful and to be honest if you don't sit down and think of these things in a critical way they could look really similar regret and remorse is almost like i like to think of it like sugar and salt if you put sugar and salt next to each other and you don't tell the person what it is or they don't get a taste of it, they will not know the difference, right? It's the same thing with regret and remorse. And so I'm going to break it down. What is the difference? So people are aware. Once you start realizing that people do things in your life and they have no remorse and you start recognizing the difference, you're going to start thinking twice about letting people back in your life after they do you wrong the first time. So let's talk about it. So first things first, let's talk about what regret is. So now when we talk about regret and remorse, we're talking about distressing emotions, but they are targeted at 
different targets. They differ on where those emotions are being targeted. Okay, so that's the first thing to really, really take notice of. So when I say regret and remorse look the same, I mean they truly look the same because they're both distressing emotions and they're hard to tell apart, especially when you're dealing with someone who is a liar or someone who lacks self-awareness, right? So when we speak about regret, we are speaking about a distressful emotion that we feel pity towards ourselves, right? We feel regretful that something, a circumstance, a plot, a plan, an outcome did not go our way. So we feel sorry for ourselves. So the pain we feel is for ourselves. Now, when we speak about remorse, it's also a distressful emotion. But when we do something and we know it's wrong and we've caused somebody else pain or hardship, we feel remorse for the things we did that caused distress or some type of pain or bad outcome for them. We are remorseful of what we did because of their emotions. You see the difference? So majority of the time when we go through cycles with people over and over and over and they are not changing their behavior or their actions, it's because when they came back to give you that apology, what they felt was regret, right? They felt regretful that you took something away. Majority of the time it's you, right? You took yourself out of a circumstance, out of a scenario. You took yourself back, you took your energy back, or you took something back that you were giving to them that they were benefiting from. So of course they feel regretful. So when they come towards you, they'll tell you how sorry they are, how they should have not done this, how they should have not done that. But it's all about what they did and now not about what they did and how it made you feel and how it impacted your life. If you listen closely, very closely to people, they will show you exactly who they are and what they're saying. And usually regret sounds just like this. I am so sorry I did this. I am so sorry it did that. Since you've been gone, I've been sad. Since you've been gone, I don't have this. Since you've been gone, I don't have that. When you took this out of my life, I felt this. If you listen very closely, when someone is regretful, they're talking about their pain and their emotions and how they feel once they have lost you. And usually, because the person on the receiving end, which is usually you receiving the apology, we start thinking, oh my God, this person is in pain because they lost me. And this person's in pain because A, B, and C. And we automatically think that they are remorseful, right? but truly they are not, they're regretful. Now, when someone is expressing remorse, it sounds very different. It's gonna sound something like this. I am sorry I did this to you because it caused you pain. I am sorry I did this to you because I didn't realize the impact it was having on you. And now that I'm looking at it from a different lens, I realize all that it has cost you. I realize I did this, this, A, B, C, D. They take accountability for the fact that they have caused you pain. They take accountability for the fact that they have caused some type of mental or psychological anguish or physical pain within your life. They're acknowledging that they created a loss of some kind, right? A loss of an opportunity for you, not a loss of an opportunity for them. And so people get this really confused and one what winds up happening is when you let people in to apologize they express regret majority of the time it's not remorse right if it was remorse their actions would change and so now i'm going to go a little bit into how does remorse look like but when someone is truly truly remorseful the first thing i said you're going to look out for is number one they are going to express how they what they have did, whatever actions they took has caused some type of loss, some type of pain, some type of consequence that affected you, not them. So that's something to really look out for. Number two, the apologies that they give you is going to be heartfelt. You're going to notice when a person is regretful, they like to skate over what they did. Or they'll give you blank statements of apologies like, I'm sorry. You're sorry for what? They didn't even explain what they did. Majority of the time when you ask someone what are they sorry for after they've given you a blank statement, 
They can't produce. They can't produce a heartfelt, sincere apology. And you want to know why? It's because they never sat down to truly reflect and become self-aware of what they have done and how it has impacted you and the damage it has caused you. They don't really understand on a deep, profound level. And you'll notice that by people who try to skate over apologies or try to rush you in your healing process, right? Like they'll say things like, oh, I already said, sorry, what else do you want from me? Insincere, right? Lacking empathy, right? If they did something that has truly hurt you, there's no time frame on how long it's going to take you to heal. You don't get to hurt people and then put limit limitations on how long that person is allowed to feel how they feel about the injustice that, you know, they have caused in your life. So when people do that, you automatically know they're regretful and not remorseful. And you need to really start thinking about, do you really want to give this person a second chance? Right? So, so that's what you're going to notice about their apologies. They like to skate over it. They like to just, you know, rush through it. And they don't want to take the time and sincerely give you a heart, deep felt apology. And they don't want to go in depth about the things they have done. So that's another one you want to look out for. If they're not going in depth into what they did, that means they truly don't understand what they did. Or if you have a conversation about what they did and it automatically turns into an argument, it's going back and forth, it becomes a power struggle, that's because that person hasn't truly taken accountability for what they did. Another sign to look out for when you're going back and forth with people who have done you wrong in some type of form, way, fashion, whatever it may be, is... After they giving you the I am sorry or I am sorry that you feel that way, which is not an apology. And I covered this on one of my old videos on, you know, what does a sincere apology look like? Like, what does it really look like? How does it sound? So I'm not going to go too much in depth into those steps. If you're curious about that, go check out that video. So one thing you will notice in people who are not sincere with their remorse and it's just regret is after you start kind of digging into their apology and trying to figure out what they're sorry for because they don't truly know, you'll notice that as they're trying to explain why they are sorry, that they'll start finger pointing and blaming you. So once again, accountability means you take full accountability for what you have done. If you have hurt someone and harmed someone or caused some, you know, someone a, a loss or a lack or some type of negative consequence, you do not get to point fingers of why you did it. And majority of the time, these people like to justify their actions and their words. Well, I'm just trying to explain to you why I behave this way. No, if they're doing that, that means they're still not understanding and not taking full accountability and not understanding what and how they have come up to this point of causing this harm to you, right? Because when you take accountability and you truly understand why you do the things you do, you have to understand that your actions stem from your behavior, not from anybody else's. It doesn't justify or explain, I did, some, I did this because you did that. No, that's not how it works. You don't get to apologize and then blame me for the reason why you did it in your apology. Does that sound like an apology? It does not. So you want to make sure that you're looking out for these signs when someone comes to you and starts telling you that they feel all this remorse. You want to make sure when you are dealing with someone who is trying to come back into your life and trying to tell you how sorry they are, you want to make sure that you're paying a lot of attention to the fact that if their regret is leading them to remorse or is their regret just regretful because they have been restricted to your energy and your resources and something that you are providing that they don't have right now. So now they're regretful for that. So the reason why people wind up in cycles back and forth with people over and over and over once again is because they are regretful. They are regretful. They only worried about their emotions. They're feeling self pity for themselves because you restricted or you took something away from them that they feel like, oh no, I need to get it back. So let me go and give this apology so I can go back into the cycle with this person. But once again, if that regret is not leading to remorse, is not leading to self-awareness 
and accountability and changing of the behavior. How regretful are you? The truth is that they're not regretful for the pain they have caused you. They're regretful that they're feeling pain for what they have done and that it has, you know, backfired and caused a certain circumstance in their life. And I'm going to give you another example so it could be clearer, clearer to certain folks because people have a hard time with this. They get stuck in their emotional thinking and their emotions and they project it onto other people and they're like, oh, well, this person didn't really mean it. And they make up all these justifications for why people do what they do and then they wind up letting these people back in and in cycles with them. If you want to start dodging people with jealous and envious energy. If you want to start dodging these karmic cycles that I've been speaking about in my videos, right? And going through these cycles with people over and over and over, this is one of the most important lessons that you have to be able to take in and not justify and not make excuses for people's actions and learn, learn to discern the difference between regret and remorse. And the biggest way to determine regret from remorse is how did you feel after that person so called told you they were regretful. If you have to go back and forth with someone and you're arguing and you're debating and they tell you things like, I apologize if you felt that way, meaning I apologize that your feeling, <laughs> your feelings are all over the place. I'm not apologizing for my actions and how I contributed to the way you know, you feel and I made you feel. I'm just apologizing for the fact that you felt that way and you're entitled to your feelings and there's nothing I can do. That's a cop out. Make sure you're really paying attention to people's words and not only that, but make sure you're paying attention to people's actions. A lack of self-awareness, a lack of accountability, a lack of remorse is always going to show up in the words that they use and the actions that they take. But most importantly, it's always going to show up in how you feel. How do you feel? Do you feel heard? Is the person making and taking actions to correct their behavior? And I don't mean only for a week or a month, but long term. If you're not seeing that out of someone, then you already know that what they feel is regret and not remorse. And that's the ultimate way to get out of these cycles with people. You want to avoid cycles of life going over and over and over and over and being drained all the time and avoiding people with nasty spirits and bad souls. You want to make sure that they are on your same level. If you know how to express and show vulnerability and remorse, you want to make sure that you're welcoming people like that in your life. And the minute they show you the first time who they are and the fact that you have pleaded and begged and cry and they watch you go through some psychological and emotional turmoil and lose things, you know, all because they have done an action that created a reaction in your life and they're not sitting there and being remorseful for the actions that they took and they're not trying to correct that behavior, you already know. You already know. There's nothing more motivating than a person. If a person says that they love you and they care about you and you're telling them you have the this and you have hurt me and this is the way I feel and all, you know, all these different things that could come about when someone hurts you. If you have sat down and looked someone straight in the eye and gave them that opportunity, that time and that energy, and you expressed to them how hurt you have felt and how betrayed you have felt and how certain things, you know, made certain consequences up in your life. And they sit there and there's no remorse for that. Take it for what it is. Take these people for what they are. Accept it and move on. Move on to a whole different cycle, a whole different chapter and turn the page on those people and move on without them. Because if you don't, you're going to keep on going through cycles over and over and over and over. You could teach people a lot of things. Teaching them integrity and basic human emotions 
It's not something that should be your duty, your burden, or your job. If you are dealing with adults, and I know there's people on my channel who are adults who are in their 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s and even older than that, you're dealing with people at this point and they still can't get it right. They still have no idea how to express remorse and how to take accountability for their actions. You know what? They're never going to get it right. You're never going to get it right. You have to understand that some people are incapable and they refuse to grow. They refuse to change. They refuse, they refuse, they refuse, they refuse the process. And there's nothing you or anyone else can do. It's up to them. That is their responsibility to take those steps. And some people don't want to take it. So you have to leave them behind. I keep hearing these stories from so many women of all these things they're going through with the men in their life. And it's like, why are you choosing to do that at a certain stage and point your logic your logic has to go and supersede your emotions because those are your emotions those are your emotions are how you feel for them but if they're not showing the same type of emotion what are you holding on to what are you holding on to it's a one-sided relationship and it's never going to give you what you want so stop going through these cycles with these type of men and just people in general you have friends that are envious and jealous and hateful and spiteful. You know what? That's not a friend. That's not a friend. So let them go, release them until better could come into your life. And that's all I have for you beautiful souls. Make sure that when you think of these concepts, you really, really, really think of it. Critically break it down and start analyzing your behaviors and not only your behaviors, but the behaviors of people around you, right? They will really, really, really set you free. And I will see you all in my next one. Mm, kisses and smooches to you all, you beautiful people. And to our next video. Bye.